thanks for coming back to um, Untold Tales. Look, I really apologise for the absence in um, in um, bringing a segment to you, but I've uh, had some really sad news. I lost my little girl, Sophie, and it was uh, tragic and uh, it was very heart wrenching, very unexpected. We were walking along the beach and having a wonderful time, and I noticed the. Um, she went to the left hand side instead of walking straight down onto the beach and I thought oh, that's a bit odd walking along and we get to a favourite sand dune where she would jump around and frolic and little fur would float around and she'd just be just gorgeous and um, she gets to the sand dune and I hear this heartbreaking yelp and um, she didn't jump up so I went over and Look down and here's my little girl sprayed out and she couldn't walk. So I picked her up and got my little boy Monty and we walked home and found a dear friend Lindsay and said, you know, I was in tears, said Lindsay, I've got to get Sophie to an emergency and so be it. Um, second phone call before anywhere's open. Phone up Lindsay and Lindsay, where the hell are you? We've got to get Sophie to the emergency she can't walk so Lindsay's there and you know she brings mushy and we wrap Sophie up and god bless modern technology with google maps fucking hell have we got to know North Melbourne with a dog and a blanket and a fucking lesbian looking for a coffee man we fucking found every fucking side street to get to Lord Smith not one of them met up we went through fucking U-turns, blocks, where well, we didn't end up there until 40 minutes later. Getting in, into emergency and, um, look, honestly, I've been dealing with my vets for 11 years, and I'm going to start saying right now, Lord Smith Animal Hospital, to their credit, left my vets for dead. We get in there, give them all the vital details. We sit down and it's emergency. I'm waiting with Lindsay and Lindsay's pacing. She's dying for a cigarette and a coffee. God bless the little soul. Work out how to use the um, modern technology and that's touch and go folks for a fucking um, um, utility that dispenses your coffee and your nuts and dispenses or whatever it does. So you can touch and go. We worked it down in three touches. Um, so we got Lindsay a little beverage and a cigarette and, you know, went back inside and was saw by the triage nurse. And, you know, they're just beautiful. She looked at Sophie and did a few tests and I could sort of see in her face that... Um, there goes the dog. That, that all was not well. So... She takes me back in and she says, look, you can either take your dog home and make an appointment or um, we suggest you um, wait. And I thought, fuck, we've been here since it's open. I'm just going to wait. So the triage nurse, you know, gave me this beautiful pink blanket and I wrapped my little dog up and sat there and Lindsay said, look, it could be three hours. I'm going to go home and have a shower. I thought, fucking hell, girl, you're a lesbian. Why the hell would you shower at this hour of the morning? You've been drinking red wine all night under candlelight, watching or reading poetry. You don't need to shower. But off she went. God bless her, she came back with food. In this meantime, whilst Lindsay is glamouring herself up, um, Adele approaches me. And, um, you know, I'm sitting there with Sophie and she's in a pink blanket and I said to her, I said, you're the chaplain, aren't you? And she said, yes. And I told her a bit about my life and a bit about Sophie and the dogs are playing as we speak. <laughs> um, a bit about Sophie's life and I thought, now this is a bit odd. The chaplain's picked me out of everybody else in the fucking Lord Smith emergency. <laughs> you tell him, Monty. <laughs> so anyway, she brings me back a cup of tea and put an Anzac biscuit and off she trots and Lindsay comes back with 
Paul Grohl's, Breaker Ice Coffee, <laughs> and some other drink. Anyway, I'm just about to take a bite and I'm called into um, Ward 2. I go in and meet Catherine and she does all these tests on Sophie and, you know, I'm trying to be the man and not crying, you know. There's this little Sophie who was my little womble and she's pretty and she's got flowing locks and here's this fella and I'm trying to be, you know, not this little gay man who's going to cry with every tear and... She says, I've got to take her away and do some tests. So he takes her away and she sit down and bore my eyes out. I think, oh, quite, I'm on camera. Tissues, blot, 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 blot. <laughs> she comes in, I compose myself, and she said, look, I've got to do one more test. And she gets little legs and puts them, and she couldn't do a thing. She said, there's two things. She's got spinal damage, but what we can tell from the X-ray is she has this tumour on her spine. And put so much pressure on she can't walk. And the best thing we can do is either um, spend thousands of dollars to keep her here for maybe six months or to be the kindest thing and put her down. And at this stage, people, I'm crying. You know, here's my little girl that I've loved and um, when I talk about Sophie, she was my breath of life. She got me through depression. She got me walking. She got me to see that life was once beautiful. She was amazing. So anyway, it's time to say goodbye. I said to Catherine Lavesh, I don't want to put down on an icy cold metal table. It's just not right for my dog. Not this little bundle of joy that gave me the, the, the joy to live again. So she said, okay, we see you've made contact with Adele. How about we see if she'll allow you to go into her office? I said, great. So anyway, she said, we've got to prep Sophie up. And so Sophie's taken away and, um, excuse me, people taken away and you know, she comes back and oh sorry she's taken away and in the meantime um, Adele comes through and she's a chaplain as I said and a very calm woman who's you know God is her belief and God bless her for that she's not you know she's there for her reasons anyway Lindsay comes in and we go into the office Lindsay myself and it's just her and I, you know, I'm thinking, well, you know, Sophie's not here and we're obs all obs observing this camp office kids. Let me tell you, it's just too much. Picture it. The size of two broom closets. Orange, white sofa, matching chair, orange lamp with above it, high hanging by, um, fishing line is like dinosaurs and cats and so forth suspended and birds and it's just very very purely. Then you look down on the coffee table and in a whole circle is these animals all looking at each other. They're only plastic little animals this big but they're in a circle and you know there's the desk and there's places and the vet comes in and you know Lindsay, oh sorry there was a large fucking orange fish <laughs> above the land. It was like this big orange fucking floating there, highlighted by the land. <laughs> Too much. Anyway, I'm taking it off. Oh my God. Adele comes in. She says, would you like some years in? And to this day, I wish I could remember it. Um, but it was beautiful. But the most beautiful part was when Sophie had passed, but I'll get to that. New anyway, Adele comes in and it's peaceful and she's got music playing and Catherine comes in and I'm sitting on the floor and Catherine comes in and puts Sophie in my arms and I look around to everybody and you know everyone's looking at me and I'm thinking well I don't want my little girl to think that this is the saddest moment of her life. I want her to think she's loved and 
She's looking around at the fucking orange fish floating in the air thinking, what the hell, that's just too much. And hearing the beautiful music and Catherine, to her credit, put the, if you don't know what a green needle is, the green needle is the last part that will kill your dog or your animal. It's a lethal dose. It's always green. It's green and syringe to kill them. So if you hear the green needle, it means your dog or animal is going to be put down. So the green needle is there and there's three others to put her into certain stages for relaxation. Catherine comes down, she didn't ask me to get up on this tiny little orange and white sofa. She sat down and out with me. So I've got Sophie here and her little head's there and you know she's got the catheter coming out but she had something to make her a bit peaceful so you know she's a bit out of it. <laughs> and she's there and you know she's had teeth removed because she was an old dog so her tongue's hanging out and I looked and I think, fucking hell little girl, you know. But being through a lot, you are just the most amazing gift. And this is what I'm going to do for you. Rubbing her tummy, telling her how much I love her, as the vet quietly lifts needles that are out of sight into the catheter. And Sophie went to sleep. The last piece of music that was playing was about the angels going to heaven. And that's how my dog went. Look, I don't want to be a mushy old queen and talk about how sad it isn't. Anything like that, that loss and grief is to be felt. All I'd like to say is give Lord Smith a go. Um, they offer a service that's beyond anything that I've been through, and I've lost many a dog. And. They're very special people. They take into consideration that to a lot of us, our dogs, our cats, our birds, our fish are our family and they respect that. Sorry people, if you just like to look at Mushy without a cuddles, <laughs> sorry. On a happier note and a brighter note, look, thanks for tuning in and um, listening to the little story about Sophie. I'd like to, first of all, it out there and I'd like to thank my friends you know for their, their their support and their well wishes and their feelings and emotional support and financial support in this time when I decide to have um, sofa cremated and people I don't know if you're aware that you can actually have your dogs and birds or any animal you like cremated and look they come in this beautiful little box or a box that you choose you can have it locked or unlocked for me personally I like to have it unlocked because it comes like this and in this little bag here that's done with a beautiful little bow is Sophie and very soon you know a group of us are getting together with us and Chloe who I also have had cremated um, we're going to go down to the beach where we used to go and have a little ashes ceremony and put them out and they can be together again running wherever they are and and be together but that's just going to be a little bit of them sprinkled around because um, I may be a crazy old bitch but uh, you know every dog I get every dog I keep a little bit of because I tell you why when I die and my partner dies all of our little children that we've been blessed with along the way their ashes are going to go in with ours and then the whole fucking family is going to be sprinkled together and be together. That's what I'm going to do. So tune in to Pet Tales because next time we're going to cook doggy treats. Yep, healthy doggy treats from scratch. None of this bullshit from shoppings at supermarkets. Look forward to seeing you on Happy Tales. <laughs>